Night Showcase. Sponsored by WSN Live. Live streaming made easy. Living for the weekend here on the News 25 Friday Night Showcase alongside Ansley Brent. I'm Jeff Hager, already back for week two, starting off with one of the best rivalries in all of South Mississippi. That's right, Jeff, but they say in order to be a rivalry, both teams have to win. And not too long ago, Pascagoula beat Gauche 10 years in a row. 10. But the Singing River Classic not so one-sided anymore, with the Gators having won the last two over the Panthers. Home opener for Gauthier, these two teams combining for 93 points last year, hoping for some more fireworks this year. And hey, my former partner in crime, Jalen Morris, in the house of the coin toss. But here's the thing about the aforementioned fireworks, not that kind of game. Jeffrey Rush Jr. on the stuff. He spells it E-R-Y, I spell it R-E-Y. Either way, the future Division I signee, way better at football than I ever was. Ball back to Gula, and here's the new look offense. Silas Quarter at quarterback, hooking up with Brian Barnes Jr., makes a man miss, and that's a big first down near midfield. Same drive, Quarter dropping back again, slings it out to Mississippi State baseball commit Keelan Parnell. He's all over the field this season. And welcome back, Isaiah Ben. How you been? Pretty good, loses his helmet, still fighting for extra yards. Panthers moving it really well, but unfortunately they turn it over on downs. What's up, man? Except they get it right back. Caden Irving never even sees Jalen Parnell, and he's got some room to work down the visitor's sideline, but get this. No points again, so the Gators going to try this one more time. And you know what they say, third time's the charm as Irving zips a beautiful pass to Emmett High of Gaucher High, and he's down all the way inside the 25. That's about it for the first quarter. In the second, DJ Khaled says you either win with us or you'll watch us win, and A.J. Phillips is like, Caden, I'll win with you. Fade route of a lifetime, touchdown Gators. Pearl River Central alum Wyatt Davis getting some camera time. Extra point, no good. 6-0 home team ensuing pass to the drive. Panthers changing it up, going to the tight end. Jesse Smith sheds a tackle, and he's going to rumble for a long way down inside the 30. But Ansley, stop me if you've heard this one before. Okay. No points from Gula. Gators defense stepping up big, and the Gators offense just doing what they do. Phillips trying to break the high score in pinball, getting it all the way down near the goal line. First and goal, Gauthier and Irving. He's going to take care of the rest. Like trying to tackle a middle linebacker. No thanks. Touchdown, Gauthier. 12-0 late second quarter, and this one is all Gators. Huge win over their rival, 47-6. Gauthier looking like a real problem for the rest of Class 5A. Last season, D'Iberville was the only team to hand pick you to loss en route to winning the 5A state championship. The next closest team to knocking off the Maroon Tide, the Laurel Golden Tornadoes in South State, which would really make for a really good early season matchup. You would think. D'Iberville rolling out the welcome mat for Laurel. Warriors coming off a big week one win over SSC, and another big test in this one. D'Iberville with the big energy, and they're led by starting quarterback Gabe Peterson. First quarter, the Warriors are ready to roll as the ball is snapped to Peterson. He takes a step back into this first as tight end, Jamel Rothschild, and he comes up just short, but it's not wasted. Next play, Peterson sneaks the ball to running back, Landon Shannon, for the first touchdown of the night. Extra point is good, and Warriors take the lead 7-0. But the Golden Tornadoes answer quite quickly. The punt is up, and the Warriors are on the hunt. But punt returner Quandarius Keys has other plans. He takes a slight jog right and puts the wheels on left as he takes it all the way to the house. See ya. Laurel right back in it, but misses the extra point, with Warriors still in the lead, 7-6. The game goes on and on and on, but so does the scoring. An exciting Ooh. finish. The final on this high-scoring game is Laurel 43, Dowerville 42, and the Golden Tornadoes barely get this win. Man, maybe that should have been the game of the week. Let's head to Milner Stadium where Gulfport pays a warm welcome to Escambia out of Florida in a rematch of last year's overtime loss for the Admirals. First quarter, Gators start the game off with the ball. However, they decide to show good sportsmanship and say, no thanks, you can have it back as the Admirals get a pick six to send an early statement extra point. No good, however, giving Gulfport a super fast 6-0 lead. Gators get the ball right back and learning quickly from their previous mistake as they're able to march down all the way from their own 40 into the end zone with a perfect pass from Lamont Sims with about a minute left in the first. Gulfport's turn and the offensive line opening up a gap wider than Moses did to the Red Sea as Emmanuel Beamer, Benzer, Bentley 
easily gliding through with the big gain. He takes a big hit, but bounces right back up, throwing that arm forward, signaling first down. In the end, the Admirals get their revenge on the Gators, winning 26 to 15. And Ansley, feel free to read a few of these. We ain't got no script, but we're just going to roll with it. Ocean Springs 35, Hattiesburg 6. The Greyhounds, yet another problem for everybody else. Resurrection Catholic, similar win by score, 31 to 6 over North Forest. Wow. St. Stanislaus 42 over Long Beach 20. And then Bay High 38 to 6 over Summerall. East Central 31 to 6. Another similar score there over Moss Point on the road. Another big win for the Hornets. And then this one's still going. Past Christian Forest County Agricultural High School 28 to 28 in overtime. Moving on here. Picayune, it's a wagon. 28 7 over Jefferson Davis County. Bank leave 2019. Comeback win over Hancock. That's a huge one. And then Biloxi, 20 to 20. 20 to 10 bounce back win over Stone. We'll be back in 30 seconds with your WXXV play of the day. Mississippians love football, and our high schools in South Mississippi, like Gulfport, Moss Point, and Ocean Springs, stay connected with their students, parents, and community by live streaming events, including football through WSN Live. WSN Live provides your school with everything you need for professional and seamless live streams that are easy for students to run. And your fans can watch online from anywhere on any device. With WSN Live, your school gets the right gear, a rock solid network, and game time tech support. Learn more at WSNLive.com. And now, the play of the day. Brought to you by Cannon Motors of Mississippi. What else could it be, Ansley? Caden Irving to A.J. Phillips. Come on! I had a feeling it'd be this He had one. a foot down, beautiful fade route touchdown, and he's like, yes, the cameraman's here. You saw him kind of smile, right? Hey, well, of course. You <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm gonna, this is going to be on Twitter later. Can't wait. But also, his team won big, so he's we probably more excited about that. But, uh, yeah, this is... Uh, you know, I, I mean, Pascagoula had so many chances. Like, I mean, this game could have been a lot closer. Momentum, I think, just maybe swung in the way of Gaucher. But a uh, big statement by Gaucher after a week one loss. Uh, the Iberville is showing they can play with anybody in the state despite losing 21 of their 22 starters from last year. Uh, Gulfport, obviously, here to play, revenging last yes. year's loss. So, uh, some other big scores. Anything stand out to you or anything? Uh, I mean, I'm just mad I missed the rest of the Iberville Laurel <laughs> game. I mean, that There's seemed like a kick, huge right? one. Like, oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I only saw three touchdowns, and little did I know it's, what was it's, in store. It's criminal, right? We have to leave at halftime or even before then. The and, uh, hey, at least in October, we'll have the 7 o'clock starts back. Very but, true. Um, Can't wait. Yeah, not voicing my opinion or anything. But anyway, so uh, this has been week two of the Friday Night Showcase. Be sure to catch us next week for Ansley and myself. We'll be back 